Hello, and welcome to the Farm Traveler Podcast. Today our guest is Joseph Register from Register Family Bee Farms up here in northwest Florida. They have a honey production facility and beekeeping and all that really cool stuff. They make their own soaps, lotions, even sell bee pollen, which I had no idea that you can eat and put in your cereal. They said it's really good, so we'll have to try it. Um, Here's a cool little fact about them. Register Family Farm is a veteran-owned and operated business. Joseph and his two brothers, Jeremiah and James, are airborne and ranger qualified, army infantry officers with multiple combat tours in both Iraq and Afghanistan between them. Joseph's wife, Elizabeth, and sister Melissa are both airborne qualified combat veterans in the military police and medical service branch, respectively. Catherine, the youngest sibling, and her husband, Alex, are both army veterans in the medical service branch. All the siblings and families have transitioned from military service to work together on the farm. So if that doesn't make you want to support them even more, I don't know what will. They're a really cool operation that we happen to meet at the Peanut Festival in Dothan. So Joseph's going to talk to us about honey production, what they do, and how they do it. So stay tuned for a great episode, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Farm Traveler Podcast, Joseph Register from Register Beef Farms. How are you doing? Good. How are you today? Doing well. So just kind of take us through what exactly you do with Register Family Farms. Uh, so we are a 1,200 colony bee farm. Uh, we produce honey. Uh, the only pollination we really do is uh, during February, we go out to California and pollinate the uh, almond trees in the Central Valley there. But uh, we're primarily honey producers. And uh, we also um, have a a retail brand uh, where we sell honey and soaps, lip balms, uh, and pollen and different things. How long have you guys been in business? We started in uh, 2012. Take us through um, honey production, kind of how bees do it, their whole shebang, and then how humans process kind of takes place in that. So bees, uh, they gather nectar and pollen uh, really within about a two mile, two to three mile radius from wherever the hive is. So uh, once the sun's up and it's warm enough for them to go out, depending on the season, um, they will uh, they'll go and gather nectar and pollen and bring it back into the hive. So they're they're looking to put up a surplus of honey in preparation for the winter. Um, so if there's nectar to be had, then they're going to send out uh, out bees to get it. Uh, so our our job as beekeepers um, is, uh, well, really commercial beekeepers and honey producers, we need to put the right number of bees in the right locations so that they have easy access to the plants that are producing nectar at any given time. So uh, we move the bees around quite a bit during the season, uh, and we have just a a ton of different uh, locations, yards uh, that we put them in. Uh, so they can get uh, maximum efficiency. They can bring in pollen and uh, and nectar. It's kind of like uh, you know going going out uh, to the to the grocery store. If it's close by, you can you can make that trip uh, a bunch of times. But if you have to go farther, you can't do it as much. So the closer they are to the the center of of the things that are blooming, uh, the higher the yield is going to be. So. Gotcha. I did a little bit of research on this. So you've got three different types of bees. You've got the queen, the worker bee, and the drones. Yeah. So I think it's like 85% of the hive is worker bees. They're female. Uh, and then there's typically only one queen in the spring. Sometimes there can be two as uh, one queen is getting older and is being replaced uh, by the next generation. But typically it's one queen and uh, then a healthy hive will have somewhere around 15%. Uh, will be drones, which is the male bee. And their purpose uh, is to mate with young queens. uh, And then uh, that's it. So they actually die in that process. But majority of the work being done is is the worker, the female worker bee. They're the ones that produce the honey. So So once the worker bees have deposited the the honey, how does the process go from where humans collect the honey and then you can buy it in a store? What all goes through that process? Um, So when we go out to the hives, we use smoke and uh, and try to drive the bees out of the honey supers so they'll dive back down uh, into the brood nest and we'll pull we'll pull that honey off uh, and take it back to the honey house um, so once we do that we've got to uh, the bees cap the honey with a, a layer of wax uh, once the honey they dry it out to a certain moisture and then cap it uh, so we've got to actually cut the caps off of the cells and 
then we put the hive or the frames in extractors that spins them around and um, basically tosses the honey out of the cells. And then we let that, uh, we pump that up into a big holding tank and let it settle. Uh, so all the little bits of wax and stuff that make it uh, into the tank float to the top. And then we put that honey in barrels. Once it's nice and, and clear, it's settled out. And, uh, and then we will take those barrels of honey and put them in smaller little holding tanks where we bottle the honey and put it in the jar. So there is no uh, processing, so to speak, of the honey, no, no change. It comes right from the hive uh, to the jar and it's in its natural form. So This may or may not be true, but I've heard honey never spoils. Is that correct? It can be kept indefinitely. Uh, okay. The major thing you have to watch out for is moisture content. And if it is 18% or lower, uh, then yeast won't reproduce in it um, and ferment it. But if you have too high moisture content, uh, it'll, it'll ferment. And so produce alcohol and carbon dioxide as they eat the sugars in the honey. And, uh, and so that's one way it can go bad. Uh, people sometimes don't understand what crystallization is, and they think the honey has gone bad when that happens. But almost all honeys will crystallize eventually. Uh, Tupelo honey is a special honey that is kind of an exception to that, um, but uh, it just has to do with the chemical makeup of the honey and the types of sugars. Uh, most honeys have more glucose than fructose, and uh, it has to do with water solubility. So it's just uh, the dextrin solids coming out of solution, uh, and some nectars do that quicker. Some nectars uh, produce honey that uh, it, it takes a while, but it happens to almost every honey, and it's not it's not a matter of the honey going bad. It's just the natural process of honey changing from uh, liquid to uh, semi-solid. Does pollen really make a difference in the taste of the honey? Like if they get pollen from different plants? Uh, so the pollen's not going to have an impact at all. The different nectars can have a, a huge impact, the different, different trees and plant sources. The pollen can have um, you know, all kinds of different benefits. It's, it's very nutrient-rich, but it doesn't really affect the flavor. Whenever I saw you guys at the peanut festival, I've never seen this before, but you guys had um, pollen for sale. So tell us more about that. Like what are some nutritional advantages of eating bee pollen? So it's got a lot of different amino acids, minerals, a lot of B vitamins. Uh, practically speaking, it, it increases your energy, uh, boosts your immune system, and helps out uh, somewhat with, with seasonal allergies, just getting your body exposed to plant pollens, uh, which bother people as it blooms. So the, the theory behind that is uh, if you're taking it constantly, your body's used to it so that when it happens, it's not a, as great a uh, reaction. But uh, so I, I eat it every morning and uh, a lot of people do the same. So you, you said you ship out your bees to California every year. Uh, yeah, there was some documentary on Netflix talking about how a lot of bee producers do that and they do it for the almond industry and a whole bunch of different tree nuts that are out there. I also heard that there's a lot of issues going on out there where people will steal beehives and stuff like that. What are going along those lines? What are some current issues that are kind of going on in the honey industry? Almond pollination is, is a large part of, of commercial, commercial beekeeping. Now um, it represents a large portion of our, our income for the year and allows us to keep, you know, keep being beekeepers. Uh, there's a lot of risk involved out there. Um, one, and this kind of touches on, being a honey producer in general or a pollinator is uh, when you interact with growers, uh, their major concern is obviously the health of their plant, their crop, their tree. And so uh, when there's heavy rains, a lot of, a lot of moisture, different, different problems going on, they, they will spray different uh, fungicides and different things to help their, uh, to help their tree or plant or whatever it is produce whatever they're producing. And that's not always the best thing for the bees. Um, and so that's something that's always a, uh, um, a concern to the beekeeper being out there and working with the growers to make sure that uh, that's not happening while the bees are, are present. Uh, so that's a, that's a concern. And uh, there is hive loss and, and bee loss when you do pollination. And that's one of the main reasons why we are, aren't uh, big into pollination after after almonds um, we primarily just do honey production in areas uh, away from crops um, but uh, the other thing that you had mentioned earlier is 
there's always a shortage of bees and almonds pretty much every year. And so when it comes to to the very end, almond growers are short and start offering a lot of money uh, for last minute contracts. Uh, then you have people coming in stealing hives from from beekeepers and trying to provide those hives to the, the people that are paying out a uh, large sum. So that's actually happened quite a bit this year. Uh, which is another concern and hasn't impacted us directly, but um, it's it's another concern. But uh, the biggest issue that we face is uh, the varroa mite, um, and uh, that pretty much impacts all beekeepers uh, throughout the country. And uh, and so if if you don't stay on top of of uh, the varroa population in the hives. Um, then you'll lose a lot of hives, and so we've learned we've we've uh, suffered some pretty big losses early on, uh, trying to figure out how to deal with them. Uh, but uh, we've gotten a lot better at it. But you still lose quite a few hives throughout the year to the varroa mite. Gotcha. Yeah, I think a lot of people are aware that um, the bee population in the U.S. has been kind of dwindling in the past couple of years. How how have you guys seen that? Like, is the, is the population kind of increasing slowly or is it still kind of going down and down year after year? Uh, I, I can't speak just in broad terms. Just what I see, we don't see a lot of feral colonies. Uh, you know, you see swarms from other beekeepers around. Uh, I think that overall the bee population in the United States is increasing, and that's because uh, there's an increase in interest in bees and a lot of, of people are getting into hobby beekeeping. And so I believe the last statistics I saw uh, show over the last few years, there's, there's an increase and we're, we're having more and more, more and more hives. Um, but uh, I don't think that the feral population of bees is, is very well. I think the last stat I heard was um, only 17% of feral colonies make it, make it past a year in the wild, just because there's so many different pests and diseases uh, that they just don't make it. So without without beekeepers, I don't think the bees would uh, would exist in any kind of numbers uh, in the wild. What kind of got you interested in working with bees? We're a, a first generation farm, um, so basically it's kind of a, a long story. But the short of it is, uh, my brother is really interested in fruit trees, and uh, and so as a part of that. Uh, he, uh, he had mentioned that he wanted to get some uh, honeybees to pollinate his fruit trees. And my dad and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so we, uh, we ended up going and listening to a, a beekeeper speak about bees, trying to learn more about it. And uh, I ended up going and working with him and just learning more. And I just had an idea that we could, you know, keep some bees and make some money. And it kind of developed <laughs> over the years into a lot more than that obviously. But uh, yeah, me and my brother and my dad back in 2012 kind of started keeping bees and my wife and I started uh, selling honey and making soaps and candles. And and then, uh, you know, time goes by and, and you end up somewhere you never thought you'd be. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, how successful have you guys been? Yeah. Um, you know, it just depends on how you define success. You know, I, I'm very pleased with how things have developed, uh, you know, it started out with me and my brother and my dad. Uh, and now it's, uh, I've got two brothers, two sisters, a brother-in-law, sister-in-law, you know, my parents, uh, and we're all working together, you know, and living off of the income that is provided by being a part of, you know, the, the honey production business. And it's just kind of cool to work together and, and, uh, you know, honeybees are just fascinating. It's just very interesting working with them, and, and I think it's a cool way to make a living. So, All right, Joseph, so if people want to learn more about Register Bee Farm or if they want to get some of your products, where can they go? Yeah, so uh, it's just uh, registerfamilyfarm.com is our website, and we have some information on there and, of course, all our products that uh, we ship um, all around the country. And also we do several farmer's markets in the area, um, they're all listed on the website. Uh, I think we do six farmers markets during the week and then all kind of different events. Uh, but uh, so we're, we're pretty, pretty easy to find here in this area. 
That's cool. Yeah, and y'all have more than just uh, pollen and honey. I think when we saw you guys, we my wife bought, a, I think, a Tupelo honey soap bar, and that thing smelled amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we we uh, we do um, honey honey and beeswax soaps and lip balms and lotion bars, and uh, and so we're constantly um, developing new products and and seeing all the different ways we can utilize the the cool products from the hive and. Uh, apply them to things people can use that's cool now this might be an off the wall question but do you guys make mead or do you, have, do you have any plans of getting into mead making yeah so i mean i've been tinkering around with that for for years and uh, i'll probably continue to tinker around with it but uh i don't know whether we'll go into the the selling of mead but we we do make uh mead and and uh honey beer and different things um just for our own use but uh, that's that's another thing that's very fascinating. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the future holds with that. All right. Well, Joseph, thanks for talking to us today about honey production and bees and all that jazz. It was really fascinating to talk to you about all that stuff. Um, so thanks for being on the podcast and we'll talk to you soon.